Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to part two of my Zebra Pleco saga. Now, if you missed last week's episode, first of all, you have it linked in the description, but second of all, I'll make you a short resume. I decided to purchase two more Zebra Plecos after I had quite the success with my first Zebra Pleco for about eight months or so. Now, these are quite expensive fish, so I really had to think about it. But since there isn't a lot of information on the internet, I did not think that what I experienced could happen. And what I experienced was that Max, my first zebra pleco, absolutely did not enjoy the addition of his new quote-unquote friends. He was or she was very, very territorial and very aggressive to one of these zebras, which I believe is a male, and they were fighting constantly. More so Max, the other guy was just looking horrible by the end of two days. So I decided to separate Max in a different tank. It's actually Johnny's temporary tank. And what do you know? They got along just great. There's something about Beras and Zebra Plecos, for me at least, that just works. And Johnny is the third Beta that actually enjoys the company of Max. I don't know. I don't know. It's just me. So what I decided to do with my Zebra tank is move it around, switch it around. I did try to switch stuff around while Max was in there, but it didn't work out. So that's why I decided to remove Max. I wanted Max to completely forget about his old environment, which with fish, you know, you can achieve if you separate them for a while, a few days, a week, a week or two. And I wanted to give a chance to the new Zebra Plecos to gain some strength, gain some weight. They were quite um, starving, I guess, when I received them. They were quite thin, at least one of them, the male, or what I believe to be the male, was very slender. So I said, okay, in one week, I'm gonna fatten them up as much as I can, let them choose some territories, let them figure out what's what, you know, and then I will reintroduce Max. So that's what I did. Another thing that I did was I acquired more caves. So let's pick this up now on the day that I purchased the caves. So I tell you a little bit more about them. All right, another day, another cave. So I got myself a few caves for the zebra plecos. I hoped I would find smaller caves, but no. So they're about three and a half to four centimeters open. I would have preferred them to be three centimeters, but I cannot find such a thing in my entire country. I think I have something on Amazon, but it's, you know, there's only one product that actually ships to my country and it has that raised front, which can make the slates unstable. Um, so I might order a few just to try them out. They do seem to be a little tinier than this, but I, I don't know. I don't think they're very good. And plus they're more expensive than the ones that I find here. But I did manage to find some that look kind of like envelopes, right? There we go. Then, yeah, it's not in any way tinier, but you know, right now, I don't think I should actually think about breeding these guys. They're juveniles. So maybe it's gonna take at least another year and a half. In the meantime, maybe I will find uh, proper caves for them. But for now, I want them to have different types of caves and places where they can hide. Ooh, some cats are having a very heated argument outside. Right, so I just want them to have lots of hiding places and just a different scape altogether so that I avoid aggression. Um, Max has been separated for about a week and I'm hoping with all of these changes, I'm hoping he's gonna or she, it, it might be a she, it looks like a she to be fully honest, but I have no idea. Uh, we'll talk about what I think I have in a second. So I just want Max to forget about his old home and just start fresh without being territorial. So it will be a first start for all of my zebra plecos. I also found slates. Now these are actually food trays and they actually did have some legs attached to them. You know those foam legs? Yeah, the glue. I had to sandpaper off and my hand is shaking. I sandpapered for an hour. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so this is what I have. I have four more caves in the tank already. So let's go ahead and try to make a decent scape and maybe by the end of the day, Max will return to his old home. Alrighty, so needless to say, I fiddled around with the caves for a little while until I got it right because I've never done this setup before and I tried to arrange everything so that 
it's as stable as possible. The last thing I want to do is any of these fish getting stuck or crushed by any of these decorations. Luckily, I do have aqua soil, which is very fluffy. So if even if something just falls on a fish, it's not going to crush them because the soil is very fluffy underneath, you know? Anyway, but I tried to make things as stable as possible. So I played around quite a bit with the setup, but in the end, I think I did a good job. Now, a little bit about this setup. It's more of a traditional, I would say, setup. If you look at videos on the internet from other people growing successfully and even breeding these fish, you will see something very similar to what I'm doing here. Maybe a little bit more aesthetic than mine. I will have to say it's not necessarily to my uh, liking as an aesthetic. I much more prefer the look of more natural wood and plants and all of those things. But you know what? I do believe it's necessary. I mean, I don't think I was experienced enough with these guys and certainly judging by the results, I do believe it makes more sense for these fish, which don't come from areas very heavy in vegetation anyway. From what I understand, where they live, there isn't a whole lot of light, there's a lot of rocks, not so much plant matter, maybe some algae and some small plants, but definitely don't think um, the chakwascape, right? So maybe it is okay for them to not have as many plants as I particularly like. As you will see, I do still use some plants and I do plan to get some more cryptocorins from the back when the stores stock up, because now they don't really have much. <laughs> And I am driving the highway again. Uh, but the tank will have a few more plants. However, as much as I don't necessarily enjoy, let's say, all of this slates and the caves and all of that, there is quite a lot of logic to why people use it and I find that yeah they're right this is how you obtain success. I am not even thinking about breeding them just yet because it's not the time but maybe it will also help with breeding. So needless to say my first setup was not enough for these guys. They obviously need more caves. I thought well I have four caves, I have three fish, yeah they're gonna arrange what caves each will get and everything will be okay. Right? Wrong. They actually need a whole bunch of caves and hiding places, not really caves, but places that the caves and the slates create. I do find that sometimes they just sit upside down on the slates. They do use both of the stories um, as you see the ground floor <laughs> and the first floor they do use both of them they do much much more enjoy this setup so yeah it doesn't matter how I feel about it what matters is that the fish are happy and most importantly they're not aggressive and I'm happy to tell you guys that all aggression is practically almost zero at this point max being the oldest fish I do suspect um, is still a little bit more territorial than the others but there's really no aggression other than a little tail wag and a little pushing around. Not even that. Everybody's actually getting along just fine right now. It worked like a charm. My birds agree. <laughs> And I could not be happier. So really, you know, aesthetics is aesthetics, but the well-being of my fish is what's most important. Now, I forgot to tell you, in the week that Max was separated and these guys were getting adjusted to their environment, I also used two products to prevent disease, which is another very, very important aspect to keep in mind. I used some Seachem Stress Guard, which helps with potential existing wounds, which I know one of my fish had. And also I used Vugal, which is a complex of vitamins vitamins from what I understand. It just uh, strengthens the immune system of fish. Again, from what I understand, I cannot tell you for a fact that it does, uh, but I did use these two in conjunction and the fins of my fish got restored beautifully. Now they look brand new. The stripes that were a little bit discolored on one of the fish now are very colorful and most importantly I did not have any type of disease breaking out. No fin rot, no bacterial infections, no ick, no nothing. I didn't have anything on these fish which is great considering they were very stressed and also um, wounded. Now I'm not using these products because everybody's getting along. I'm just doing my regular water changes and minding the parameters of the tank and yeah everything is absolutely fine after two weeks of these guys now living together because yes i pre-record my videos i'm not entirely sure when each of my video will go up so everything happens in the past pretty much but i record uh, the voiceovers 
almost kind of in the day when I upload just to give you the latest information and I'm happy to say everything is going great there is no aggression everybody lives in harmony with my beta um, with everything the only thing it's missing a few plans if I'm honest I want just a few more crypto coins in the back because it's bare oh I also installed um, a um, air pump just for more aeration even though the evac from the filter was doing a pretty good job but I wanted to test a pump which probably we'll see next week yes I'm gonna do a review for a pump which is silent like super silent and it, it is super silent so stay tuned for next week's video those are the bubbles that you see in the back there I want a better diffuser but that's besides the point so other than a few cosmetic things the tank is done so for today I think that's about it I blabbed so much I lost my voice given it's six o'clock in the morning I didn't have enough coffee and it's I'm talking like nobody's business at six o'clock in the morning so please excuse my voice cracks and dwindling voice but isn't it time to go yeah I yapped a lot so thank you guys so much for watching hope you've enjoyed these two um, zebra pleco videos and stay tuned for more projects here on my channel right so with that said hope you have a great day I'll see you next time bye